with their own bodies. Could the shot have come from inside the room, a closer point? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Are there any arguments against A prime, the roof? None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? Extrapolate the radius to include all of Martinez. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. Have a look at B prime, the boardwalk. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. Have a look at point B double prime, land's end. 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these positions, Let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it. Possibly from a tent. No. Too far-fetched. Have a look at point B triple prime, the islet. One kilometer away. An unlikely point of origin. Beyond the docks somewhere. On an islet in the Bay of Martinez, perhaps. There are islets there. Badly charted as they may be. Continue. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window, between Rue de saint Gislen 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme, and access to the islets is questionable. Kim, do you think the shot could have come from further than the roof in Martinez? From where, precisely? Let's say B prime, the boardwalk, B double prime, land's end, B triple prime, the islet. I see you have given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Much less than from the roof, but still. Okay, well, we should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nest if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. A simple hypothesis can be wrong, but it's something to build on. Blink. Let's see if she has anything else to say after interacting with the uh, window. Oh, she's gone. Oh, for the first time in the game, she gone. Unless she's like in the apartment. Maybe because I didn't arrest her, she just dipped. How's rain and wind? Hopefully I had a good ambiance. Uh, it was raining really hard. At Wait, I just realized, why is my guy not centered? We had this problem once before. Hold on a sec. I'm going to save the game, and then I'm going to load the game to fix it, because uh, we had this glitch one time before. There we go. Alright, so yeah, I think it's too late, and everybody's gone to bed. Uh, grab that. Yoink. How do we fast travel? Someone told me that there was a way to fast travel in the game, and I've just never successfully done it. Leave the building. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nap time. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Enter the shack. 
On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next. An old mirror hangs on the wall. Can't attempt any of that. All right. The bed is comforting. Sleep. If Just lay down with my bag of trash. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. Nice. The White mattress noise feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street recorded in you forever on Ferratate. Spinning, spinning. Tell me, am I dreaming? No, you're spinning tapes at the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang! The endless learning experience. Spinning on empty. On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studied with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth. The plotted flowers. The faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. The endless visions erase them. It's not possible anymore. It's stuck on loop. Whirling. Spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Uh, hi Mark, do you understand Spanish? Uh, no comprende espanol. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. Uh, what if I want to be the agent of nothing? It's too late. You're not made of nothing anymore. You're something now, Harry. I tried to drown you in the black water, but you re-emerged, kicking and screaming, running. And for what? For the money, baby. <laughs> for the greater good. Solving your little crossword puzzles, doing your tasks, crossing names off lists, trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. We're making progress. Measured, steady progress. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world changing around him. He's got no idea what he's in for. Feel the pillow under your cheek. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. Do it for the picture puzzle. 
put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. Open your eyes. Healed health. Good. You're up. Listen, there's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. What is it? It's a suspicion, or a feeling really, that things are not quite in hand around here. An earth-shattering deduction from your psyche. What will those guys come up with next? Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly, out of control. The center isn't holding. And despite your efforts to moderate and contain these energies, things only seem to be getting worse. Let's get right to it. What needs to be done? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. What exactly is la responsabilité? The most awesome, terrible thing. It is human nature to crave la responsabilité and to deny it. That's why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. I thought I was assigning responsibility for the murder. Harry, Harry, you're thinking about this too narrowly. La responsabilité isn't concerned with trivial questions like who killed who. It's about the real issues, the human welfare index, the price of staple goods, the transition to real democracy. All right, give it to me. I'll accept responsibility. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of dictatorship. He said tater. You can't simply seize la responsabilité for yourself. It must be given by a legitimate authority, like a committee. Do we really have time for this? There is always time to follow best practices. Once someone's decided to cut corners for the sake of expediency, who knows what else they're capable of? Swift, decisive action. Fun stuff. That's what they're capable of. And who should sit on this committee? Only the most even-keeled minds in Martinez. Your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a natural place to start. Together, you'll be able to discover who has la responsabilité in Rivershaw. And, if necessary, you'll have the wisdom and expertise to assign it among yourselves. And what happens once we've assigned responsibility? Most likely, your findings will be collected in a report, which will be carefully reviewed by your superiors. Once they've reviewed it, those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations to be taken up at the next meeting of the Standing Committee. Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the proper channels. All right, I'm prepared to take on this awesome burden. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. Okay. Step outside. I need my blankie chat. My limited edition minky mucklock blankie exclamation match. Kim looks like I kept him in the garage. All right. Ew, we need to check out the sniper spots. Um, one of them was over there. Grandma shot him. <laughs> Grandma did it. Oh my gosh, Black, no spoilers. The water runs from the west, the source is upstream. Broken pipe. Could this be the buoy Klaz Klazzy told you about? A metal and plastic contraption bobs up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first, it just looks like trash, but if you look closer. That over there. Must be the boy class she told us about. The one she hid her passport in. We should take a look. Ooh, hidden things, secrets, lies. Pick up the buoy. You lift the boy out of the water without much effort. 
It's not tied to anything. The cords dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. Examine the plastic ball. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long, but it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it close, but only just barely. The brittle metal of the latch has cracked. Simple construction. Very unsafe. Open the buoy. A shot glass's worth of seawater pours out. Some algae and nothing else. Well, damn. No documents. Who do you think took them? I have no idea. This is a minor quirk. We knew what was in the buoy anyway. Or think we do. This is a small loose end, either way. Not important, I hope. Maybe Classia took them herself? That may very well be the case. We should keep an eye on her. Nothing more for us to do here. Let's go. You could ask the miss what she thinks later, if you have the time. Though you doubt she'll tell you much at this point. We're lucky it's still here a little longer and it would have floated away. We still got here too late. There's nothing of use here anymore. Let the empty buoy be. My body is a temple, ancient, cursed, crumbling and probably filled with something evil. Angeline, sorry about all that, but thank you. Appreciate your continued support. Welcome. sniper nest thing. Not getting the, the Barku jacket. Worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. Could this structure have been used to take the shot? From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking the shot? Just some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms tower. I don't see it, Lieutenant W. Freitor. I don't see a person take a shot here and hit something there, in the whirling in Iraq. Um, maybe the assailant climbed the comms tower and took the shot there? It's not possible to climb that ladder, and even if it were, why? There's no platform up there to aim from. Maybe the campfire was used by the perpetrator? To warm his hands before pulling the trigger? Perhaps. But anyone could have made this. The coast is specked with fires this time of year. Truthfully, this seems like a very poor choice to take a 1.2 kilometer rifle shot from. Visibility is awful. There's water vapor everywhere. I think we can rule out Beatable Prime, was it? What about the cigarette butts? Those? A smoking assailant who favors Tumutiri to Astra or Joanne? Cigarette butts are everywhere. This is a common brand for all men. Still, you felt it was important enough to make a mental note. That means something. You didn't pay attention to any of the other cigarette butts on the coast. Look over the water to the whirling and rags. There. 1.2 kilometers over the cold water of the bay, through a thick snowstorm melting flake by flake in the waves, you see the smallest rectangle, barely visible. 
a glowing light on the third floor of the whirling in rags. With binoculars, you would see a young woman's shape move behind the glass, her limbs long and slender, smoking, drinking, being happy and elated without you. Because you're here, freezing in the wind, aren't you? Doing your detective work. Finish thought. Okay, so that's not it. Um, check island and boardwalk for bullet traces. I don't know how to reach the island. Maybe the lady with the boat? Right, I, I never realized we could go to the island until this point. Uh, let's go toward the boardwalk, see what we can find. Are you gonna do another playthrough of the uh, new builder strategy? Of this? No. No, this is a wild game, but no, I'm just gonna do the one playthrough. We need the poop jacket. Okay. Chips peeking in. You see, a once bro mm, anything new from this guy? Hello. Isn't this a fine morning? storm outside. Okay. There we go. Off to bed, have a great stream. See you, Gray Fox. All right. Looking for something to interact with on the boardwalk. <laughs> People paid money to park here. No one would pay now. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner. Check boardwalk for bullet traces. Check island for bullet traces. Boardwalk. The tough part is figuring out exactly what part of the boardwalk. Some tear, an empty cigarette. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. It's a long way down to your death here, 20 meters at least. A man lies on the boardwalk.
sunshine probably smells like tasty fermentation. mentioned that it wasn't going to be directly like behind where the church was because the church would be in the way of the shot. Let me see if the DJ kids have any new things to say. Hi again. So, uh, as always... Nope. I think, was there a way to enter the place where the father was sewing his son the mural? Uh, the big building on the boardwalk? I saw that you could interact with the stairs that was inside that building. But I did not see a way to enter that building. I'm gonna go take another look. I just clicked on the stairs in there. No, he, just, he just walks up here and looks at it. Let me talk to him again. Hello. I want to hear about the film building again. Sure. What's on your mind? Um. That's something but of else. course. <laughs> what else? No. You see. I still need to talk to the big guy at the um, uh, cargo area. I could do that. Wait, who are these two people hanging out by my car? That's one brutal motor carriage. Says the young man with piss bleep on his back. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan, F the world. A snazzy shit-ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors, cops heads, scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cock carriage like this would have proper skull value. Ahem. <clears throat> While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and <laughs> On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. I'm so glad you asked. The question was rhetorical. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger. Infamous for <laughs> non-verbal modus operandi. What swagger? Say nothing. 
They usually occupy the 